want to speak about advancing in your territories. Praise the Lord. Advancing in your territories. Uh, Jesus himself needed to also advance. Jesus needed what? To also advance and he was being resisted. So in the gospel of Luke chapter 4 verse 42 the Bible says a couple of things. When it was day he departed into a deserted place. Uh, let's read from verse um, No, it's okay. It's okay. Just two verses. And the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. Now, look at that. He is in this place. Now, maybe 40, verse 40. Uh, just in context. The sun was setting. All those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. That, that's a good thing in the city. When everyone who is sick comes to a Jesus meeting, he lays, laid hands on them and they got healed, every one of them. And the Bible says, and the demons also came out of many, crying out saying, you are the Christ, the son of God. And he rebuking them, did not allow them to speak for they knew that he was the Christ. Now when it was day, he departed and went into a deserted place. Now you can understand, after such a powerful move of God, he's now gone to a deserted place and the crowd sought him and they came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. You understand why, right? Jesus Plant a church here. Don't leave us. The way we have been healed, we will be sick next week. The demons you have cast out are likely to come back. So please stay here. I think he should have been telling them, Nikitoa pepo wakikisha irudi. Unazikia? Nikikuombea upone, make sure you eat healthy. Because it's not just about healing you. It's also becoming preventive. Then the next verse says. But he said to them. What did he say? I must preach the kingdom of God. To the other cities also. Because for this purpose. I have been sent. So other cities are other territories. So, I must not only take care of this territory, but the next territory. When we are talking about territory, I told you, we are dealing with spheres of influence, metron. Remember, we are talking about metrons, the Greek word for spheres of influence, places God has placed you. Listen, these are not just physical places. The territory here is both ways, physical and spiritual because you are in Nairobi and you are not in your you know the county where you came from because only some of you were born here very few of you were born here the rest of you ni kuja mlikuja kwa sababu mlikuwa mnatafuta opportunities africa uh, moves towards urban centers because of opportunities are we together when kenya created counties devolution it was a very bright idea so that not everybody should come to the city. Others should go to the counties. Maendeleo pia iko uko. Are we together? And there are jobs. It's slow, but after 100 years, uh, I almost said you will see how it will have impact. But then I realized after 100 years, none of us will be here. And it's not a prophecy. Huh? You better think about it. Are we together? So... Uh, <laughs> 
So you are in Nairobi as a physical territory. Whatever you do here, whether it is work, whether it is raising a family, whether it is going to college, you need to advance. You cannot go to college in Nairobi, then you drop out. Then you are now stuck. You don't have enough certificates, education, opportunities because you st got stuck because kuna kashaita ni kadiingilia. It is cut off your advancement. That's why I'm here this morning to deal with those interruptions that cause people not to advance, whether physically or even spiritually. You got an anointing and when you are in high school, you would pray for the sick and they get healed. When you came out of our school, you are sick yourself. Okay. I mean, you, you, you just go to work. Some of you are very active in college. Then you got married. Your activity got married. Na ikapikiwa chai, akutosha na chakula. And you are parked in the house as a muzee. What do you mean muzee? Now to jafika fifty. Are we together? So there are so many things that make people Shadaya, the engine now is running Go to 1 Corinthians 15.58 Listen to this before I come back to Jesus 1 Corinthians 15.58 says Therefore my beloved brethren Be steadfast, immovable Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you stopped laboring. You are no longer steady. You got moved. Yeah, the Bible says you should be immovable. Some got moved by a good job. You got a good job. You got busy. The other day I was remembering. I got a story. I don't like starting with a story, but uh, I think Nisawa too. I don't know. That, I think this one I've never told you. My God, today I have a story I've never told you. Uh, after school, to Kitafuta Kama Tuende University, I'm a college, I'm a I applied for two jobs. Uh, one at uh, Pan African Insurance. They never called me. Uh, then I applied at uh, the, the Barclays then. So I went to the Barclays. They gave me a maths test. I passed. They test them in other things I passed. I was to work with the bank. So, uh, then they told me, you, you have emerged number one. We shall uh, give you instructions next week. Up to next week. <laughs> that is almost 35 years ago. Jesus. So, I discovered, it's not that the devil interfered. It's only that, how would I be preaching the way I have been preaching? Seated in a teller, giving people money. Not me. I think that's somebody else. Because of calling. Do you understand? So that was not my territory. The bank, I respect them because they keep my money. It's not my territory. Are we together? My territory ni hii. Hii ni kosasa hii ndiyo territory yangu. And I must advance in this territory. So let's assume you are in the bank. You entered in as a cashier or a, you know, the term, whatever. But, but after 10 years, at least you should be a manager or something. Surely. Everything that grows should grow. There are many people whose growth is less than a tortoise speed. Tortoise speed. For that purpose, I have been manifested this morning to come and say, you must advance in your territory. Naibada imeisha. Tukopo moja. You must do what? Zire vitu zote zingine nasema ni za kuongezea na kupea examples na kuwaonyesha scriptures. Ata Jesus, amefanya miujiza, mikubwa sana, ameponya kila mutu. Lakini wana muambia tafalari kaa hapa. Anambia no, 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 no. I must. I must. He said I must. Uh, I must. Pastor Nehemiah, my brother was teaching five musts that Jesus said. This is one of the musts. I must preach the gospel. I uh, preach the kingdom 
of God to other cities also because of this because for this I have been sent from this above us you can see the commitment of Jesus the commitment he had on his own territories are we together so a couple of things I'm gonna say uh, like three major points and uh, the third point has maybe like four points <laughs> All right. Number one, God has a territory for you or God has a portion for everyone. God has a territory or a portion for everyone. God has a location. God has an allocation for you. God has a place for you to be in the spirit. God has a place for you physically, spiritually, socially, God has a place for you financially. God has a place for you in, in all dimensions. Are we together? Now, Psalm 16 verse 5 and 6 talks about this matter. And the first thing to establish is whatever or whatever is the name of the place I need to be, that level, that dimension, that is where God wants me to be. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. So let's agree God is the one in charge of the territory and the place where you need to be, where we need to be. And he is my portion. So that place, I don't want to go to a place where my God is not there. I don't want to go to a place where he doesn't want me to be. I want when I am where I am, that's where my God is. I am found where God wants me to be found. Are we together? You must be found spiritually, physically, socially where God is. So that at no time will you say, God, you have forsaken me. God, I haven't seen you. Why am I here suffering, struggling? Because let me tell you, when you know God is with you at the level where you are, no matter what rises against you at that level, God will maintain and sustain you and keep you because that is his portion for you and he is your portion. The psalmist says in verse 6 that the lines... These are apportionments. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. And I like the way he declares. He says, yes, I have what? A good inheritance. Everybody in this house, you must locate your good inheritance. The good place. Glory to God. If you don't like where you are right now, may this be the service to give you a push so that you begin the journey to where you are supposed to be in the spirit. There are levels of anointings you need to operate in and you need to get there in the name of Jesus. There is grace that is available for you. Glory to God. And you need to begin to see the, the flow of that grace upon your life. God is my portion and he has caused lines to fall for me in pleasant places. Glory to God. Paul is the one who gave us the, the, the scriptures or the Lord used Paul to speak this, the second Corinthians chapter 10, the verse 13 to 15. Just write it down where we say, you know, uh, it talks about the sphere and the metron. I will not go back there. Uh, well, the, the total pastor, we have will not boast beyond measure, but we need the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes Corinthians. Are we together? There is a sphere which God has apportioned you and has apportioned me. Now, I want you to see uh, that, let me put it this way, uh, write this, these things down. As a believer, we have the following allotments, just, just as an example. One is what we call in spheres of influence. There's a place where you ought to be where you are more influential than you are right now. Number two, you have gifts. Your gifts is a place we would call a territory. Number three is calling or your vocation. Your calling or vocation. Now, number four is anointing. 
Now, there is an anointing which is a sphere place you need to come. And number whatever is ministries. There is a ministry that God has apportioned for you. Are we together? So, listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, beginning verse uh, beginning verse 5. Uh, he is trying to correct the Corinthians and in the process of trying to guide them, he says some other things that are very powerful. He says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? There are two major ministers who used to preach in Corinth. There's another one called Clement, but these two are the major ones that used to really do a lot of stuff. And uh, they became a little wise, unwise and some aligned themselves with Apollos, others aligned themselves with with uh, Paul and others even with Peter uh, you know I mean Christ not Peter but Jesus so some are for Apollos others for Peter I mean for Christ others for Paul so he was telling them no don't be babies to operate carnally but then in the process he said these words uh, Paul or Apollos are ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one Somebody said to each one. There are certain things God gives to each person. He has given to Apollos. He has given to who? To Paul. Identify, please, ladies and gentlemen, what is this that God has apportioned to you and given you? That is your territory. You need to defend it with all your strength. So let's look at the next verse. The Bible says, I planted. So, He's the one who planted the church in Corinth. I planted. I did the pioneering. I did the crowd breaking. I preached the message first. The first people got saved. They had gospel from me. Are we together? I planted. But what did Apollos do? He had a different sphere. Different assignment. He watered. He came to water the seeds of the gospel that I planted. Are we together? But look. It is God who gave the increase. So when Paul was planting, God was ensuring planting is going on. When Apollos was watering, God was ensuring the watering process is happening well. Even in this service when I'm ministering right now, God is ensuring he brings the increase in your spirit. He's the one in charge of what's going to happen in your spirit right now. And he is laying the word in your spirit. I'm trusting him. Glory to God. He will grow you up and help you to come to the place where you need to be in the spirit. Look at the next verse. He says, so then, neither he who plants is anything or he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So he emphasizes that matter. The next verse says, now, he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor why because apollos has his own task has his own territory now i paul i have my own territory god is the one who is going to reward me and also reward apollos each according to their labor so ali where will you reward you for your seller think about it look at the next verse for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. I like the first part. Here the church is called uh, a group of workers. God's field where you know, can plant seeds. It's called God's building. We are called God's building. But I like the aspect, the first one, fellow workers. Praise God. Fellow what? I want to remind you, two years ago we talked about the priesthood of all believers in this house encouraging every believer to become a minister you must become a minister in one way or another amen whether you're a minister who prays intercession praying for the pastor praying for leaders praying for those people that god gives you burden you are woken up by in the night by god you know with a dream or with a burden for somebody so you are a minister in prayer that's ministry there are certain ministry that is done at the front line and there is certain ministry that is done at the back line. Some ministry in the front line will be seen. Are we together? But there's some other ministry that is so critical that happens in the back line. No one sees. No one claps hands for you. But angels in heaven. 
They are keeping record of your labor and you have your reward. I pray in the name of Jesus, whether front line or back line, you are doing something for Jesus. Look at the next verse. This territory, Paul describes it and he says, according to the grace of God which was given to me. That is his territory. The grace of God given to him. And he need to grow in grace. He need to advance in that grace. Are we together? So his grace here is now described. What kind of grace is his? It is. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Remember he planted. Right? I have, I, he laid the foundation. And another builds on it. Who is building on it? Apollos. But let each one, whether me or, Ap or Apollos, let each one take heed how he builds on it. Are we together? So you can see in that building, kuna wale waliweka musingi, kuna wale uh, walikorogea, na kuna wale wanakucha kueka ukuta. Everybody shall be rewarded. Mana kila mutu nifundi. Hello? I told you the story of this great father in the gospel in Kenya, the late uh, Paul Sukayo, God bless him. Uh, you know, uh, he, he was in Kisumu in a hotel uh, praying because he was doing a gospel campaign there. And you know the way we like praying. You know, I'm little building your work here and Lord, I pray. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Jesus told him, stop. Uh, you, you, you are not building uh, for me. You stay on site in case I need you. Au jengi, yesu yendi ya najenga. You any fundi, stay on the site in case I need you. Tell your neighbor, show up on site this week. Your site could be on your knees. Your site could be giving for the land project. Every day you are saying, I will give 200 shillings. Be on the site. Your sight could be worshipping, just worshipping, ministering to the Lord and just lifting your voice, making declarations as the Lord will help you. Glory to God. Serving in physical ways. Hallelujah. According to the grace of God given to me. So this grace of God is a territory and I bless God that in every territory, every sphere, every place God places you, he provides the grace. He provides a grace for you to do it. Glory to God. So, that's the first point. Secondly, we need to uh, ensure that our part is to see that territory and believe that God has given us the task. See and believe. Our part is to see it and believe it. To see it and believe it. Now, I'm going to read these scriptures in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 14 as an example. They're very famous scriptures of, on Jehoshaphat and how they had a battle and they were stuck. Verse 14 says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. I like this. The spirit of God came upon this guy. Do you know the story? Are you familiar with the story of Jehoshaphat? Kings rose against Judah. Jehoshaphat as a king didn't know what to do. In fact, in verse 12, the last sentence he had said, but our eyes are uh, on you, you know, because this host is big. We don't know what to do. But now here, you can see, but our eyes are upon you. But now here is verse 14. Something happens as they are uh, praying the spirit of God comes upon one man, called Aziel, and then in the midst of assembly, he prophesied. What did he say? Verse 15. And he said, listen, all you Judah and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, you and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. This matter of territory, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord who is our portion in the first verse we read, he is the one who is saying this battle of advancement is not just yours, it's my battle. Let church, even the issue of buying land is God's battle, is God's assignment. For you to get promotion, is God's assignment to get you promoted. 
For you to get the resources you need to move on in life. For you to secure your family. My God, it is the Lord's battle. But you need to see it. That it's a lost battle. You need to see that revelation. You need to hear that prophetic word by Jehaziel. You need to gain a revelation. I'll tell you almost six things here quickly. One of them is you need to gain revelation. You need to see it in the spirit. You need to behold. You need to hear the word of the Lord. Concerning your territory, don't stay uh, without having a rema word about where you are where you are going where are we at in this journey and this battle we need a constant word in the process of our journey we need to gain a revelation we need to hear what god has said now he says don't be afraid glory to god don't be dismayed because of this great multitude the next verse says tomorrow now he begins to give strategy tomorrow go down against them they will surely come up by the ascent of seas god knows how the enemy is coming and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of jeru i like god he knows he he knows where the enemy is coming through oh yes god knows in case the enemy is planning anything between now and december against you god knows if you can stay in his presence gain a revelation hear from the spirit activate the gifts of the spirit the prophetic word hear what the spirit has to say he will show you what the enemy is planning as an individual and also for us corporately as a church look at the next verse you will not need to fight in this battle position yourself after you know strategy you need to do something position yourself stand still and see the salvation of the lord who is with you O judah and jerusalem do not fear or be dismayed tomorrow go out against them for the lord is with you so you not only hear and glean and have revelation and so forth position yourself there is tomorrow the strategy you need to take action glory to god write these things down number one gain revelation i will still read on hold on that scripture gain a revelation gain the revelation number two align your attitude and expectations now that's why the scripture said do not fear do not be afraid if you fear then you will pull back uh if you are afraid you will pull back but god expects us to align our attitudes and our expectations number three worship your way up i will show you that quickly as we move forward in our territories we need to go up through worship and we need to speak the word accordingly that's number four speak the word accordingly every time say something speak the word and number five obey and take faith actions obey and take faith actions obey and take faith actions so let's read verse 18 as we continue so you position yourself and so forth jehoshaphat what did he do as a leader he bowed his head with his face to the ground and all judah and the inhabitants of jerusalem bowed before the lord worshiping the lord one of the ways we advance is by worship worship your way up did you hear what i say as you wait upon the lord to do for you what you are believing him to do worship in your waiting ah uh, worship in your waiting this is what this is what Abraham did he was told you'll be a father of many nations he did not have a baby when he heard that word but he waited there was an attitude an expectation that he heard even as he was waiting upon God to do for him what he wanted. Many of you and many of us have things God has said he will do. He hasn't done yet. So what do we do in the meantime? Look at Romans chapter 4. Very quickly from verse 17 down to 20 something. As it's written, I made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed God who gives Life to the dead and cause those things which don't exist as though they did. Abraham believed. Who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations. 
according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be so he has this revelation that he's going to be a father of many nations he knows the word already and Paul is reminding us about Abraham next verse and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years and the deadness of Sarah's womb yes the father I am not where I need to be Sarah's womb is dead I'm already 100 years old but I will not waver I will hold on to the Rema what I will hold on to to the promise I, I will still hold on look at the next verse the Bible says being fully convinced Convinced that what he had promised, he was able, he was also able to perform. In other words, I'm still holding on to the revelation and the promise. I know God has said it. Glory to God. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm fully convinced. You are convinced, but you still don't have it physically. But in the spirit, you have it. That's why you're convinced. Jayada, may somebody's life change. If you are discouraged because you're waiting too long, may you shift to a place of conviction. Conviction, conviction right now. Conviction right now. Ninajua kwa manajua. Itatendeka. Iko in the spirit. The womb of my wife is dead. I am a hundred years old. But God promised I'm going to be a father of many nations. Right now when I look into my physical eyes, things are bad. But in the spirit, I'm convinced. May a generation rise up here that is never intimidated. Sharabaza. Never so Tariaza. Intimidated by what? Intimidated by circumstances. 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 To go Bamoja. Sometimes you have had so many things you're gonna do, but you have no money. You don't have a job. The business is taking longer. But you need to be convinced in your spirit. Until when you speak before God, you are not a murmurer, you're not a complainer. You speak calling those things that are not as though they are. Is there gonna be a people like that in this house? Speaking, we're gonna have the land, we will take the territory, we will preach the gospel to all the nations of the world, we will establish institutions. We'll raise the next generation. Sinners will be saved. Miracles will happen. Oh my God. This ministry will have influence all over the world. Oh, we don't know how, but we are fully convinced. Persuaded. How many of you are persuaded of better things? Glory to God. Look at the next verse. Now, he's still waiting. Therefore, it was accounted to him. Do you know who is a righteous man? Is the one who hasn't received yet the promise, but is fully on. He is still moving on. He's still standing. That's a righteous man. That's a righteous man. Haujaona lakini ukondani. Unamini iko itafanyika. Ukona promise. You are a righteous man. Look at the next verse. This was not just written for his sake alone, but also imputed to him. Okay, Turudi Malitikwa. We are Likwa Abraham. Second Chronicles 20. Verse 17. Now we go to verse 18. So he bowed down and worshipped. Verse 19. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with the voices loud and high. He praise, this one, this praise, this one, was backed up by revelation and prophecy. This was prophetic sound. Today we raise a sound unto him, unto God who sits upon the throne. We raise a sound. The enemies are still advancing against us. We have just received a prophetic word in the assembly from Jehaziel. We, we are positioning ourselves. Meanwhile, we are raising a sound. We are raising a sound. Glory to God. So they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as I went out, Jehoshaphat stood out and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Life Church, that's your word.
believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Prophets there are real prophets and the fathers, your pastors and ministers of the gospel, those are the prophets. You believe God and you believe the preacher. You not only be farmed, established, strengthened, but you'll also prosper. In other words, you will advance. Remember the word prosper means that your journey will be successful. <laughs> oh yes, wherever you are going. Ah, hata ukiingia hizi magari, hawa watoto wetu tuwaombe jioni wazazi. Unapoingia hii magari imetengenezwa na mikono ya watu kila asubuhi mkienda shule. Hivyo ndivyo mama yenu aliwaombea. Na mothers munikumbusha leo nasikia ni Mother's Day nitawaombea sasa hii. So eh, mothers, yeah, nasikia leo ni Mother's Day. Nikwambia jaribu kucheki ilianza wapi. Hiyo story nyingine. So muombe watoto namna gani kesho? I mean tonight. Na kesho asubuhi wanapoingia hii magari imetengenezwa na mikono ya wanadamu wapatie safari njema. May they prosper. Your children will prosper. Bwana wanapoketia hizo viketi zimetengenezwa na carpenters hakuna mtu ataimba nyota yao watapita mutiani wote kabisa kwa jina la Yesu karo ya shule ninaolipa haitapotea bure no i'm serious make prayers my friend unaona kama mtoto ni mwerefu lakini kuna mahali ilifika kila kitu kaenda shini Max Kandashini, nyinyi husband and wife you are not quarreling so it is not interfering with the children because that can also interfere. Everything looks okay but wameenda shini. Maybe kuna kamtoto hapo kako na software demonic kutoka grandmother kanaimba and is stealing the success of other kids. Hello, are you listening? In fact, the other day I had to pray for another pastor's wife, another man of God. Because Musichana, anapenda Yesu sana. I'm telling you, hata Christian Union anapiga injili baka naombaka baka ako almost extreme. Lakini Max Zake Great is kanza kwenda shini, 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 shini. I, the parent told me there is a problem. Mana huyu ni top CU member. But Great is maribika. Na huyu ni mutoto ya major man of God. Yes in the embarrassment even in the spirit. To gawe kelea mkono zayada. Great the next time. Zikanda kwenda chini. I mean kwenda juu. Zikanda juu kanda juu. Sasa siku ya mutiani hiyo wiki. Mapanic na nini tukazima. Msichana alipita sasa ameadmiti ameadmitiwa university. She has advanced into her territory i declare none of you shall be hindered in your advancement as an individual zapaya or as a church sharosa i declare in this house all the devils in the city all the jealous devils all the powers of hell that try to resist brethren all your colleagues in the office all the competitors corrupt people all the bosses that are trying to intimidate you try to manipulate and block your success i declare every child of god under the sound of my voice you will advance in your territories in your sphere you will keep going up for promotion does not come from the east or west it comes from god may you succeed in your business may you succeed in your career may you succeed in your family may you succeed in your ministry zayada clap your hands somebody bless the lord you have to see what God is doing in your journey and believe it. So gain the revelation, align your attitudes, worship your way up, speak the word, obey and take faith actions. They literally position themselves at that valley of Tekoa and these guys, they succeeded. Glory to God. If you read the rest of that chapter, you'll be amazed. So what is needed, ladies and gentlemen, for us to advance and keep moving forward in our territories, uh, we need uh, how many things? Just three things for now. One, we need power and authority. Number two, we need prayer and intercession. 
And number three, we need to prepare provisions for the journey. Provisions for the journey. So, the kwanza is power and authority. Now, Jesus Christ said in the scripture we read in Luke 4, verse, uh, I think it was 4 and 43, that I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. So from Jesus' example, he also must advance to Makubali. Let me ask you, would you want Life Church to advance? Look at Life Church in the next 10 years. Just think about the next 10 years. We'll be, we will have built up our land. We'll have, we will have a, a building seating thousands. We, we will have all manner of school, I mean, it's children's centers. We'll have all manner of places there. I'm telling the truth. 10 years, stay alive. Ma, 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 stay, tell your neighbor, stay alive. Jesus. Usikufe, usi, usiende Morocco, tafadhali ukae Nairobi, ambia buwana, ngoja sita na mari, na I want to see. How many of you believe we, as a ministry, we have to advance? Now, question number two. Do you think the devil is our partner? Yeah, Shaitani is one of our partners? Ye, kazi yake ni gani? To steal, to kill and destroy. For that reason, we have to activate the Lord to come and give us life and life in abundance. So stay a lot. Tell your neighbor, stay a lot. Don't allow yourself to block your own future, your own destiny by your fears of lack of knowledge or discouragement or wrong company. People say, oh, it's not doable and all those kind of stuff. No, tell the devil you are a liar. I have set my eye as a flint. I've set my eye forward. My commitment and my focus is that in 10 years, I'll be a billionaire. In 10 years, I'll be preaching all over the world. In 10 years, I'll have many children. In t- Whatever is your vision. What Do you have a vision? Uh, 10 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 years, I'll be having two homes. One for children, one for my wife. Zaroshata. You don't need just one home. Build several homes, even for the aged. Clora Shayata. We need homes for the, because in future the, the hospice, hospice, the business of hospice, Sharosata, Zagataya, Hashiatata. That's okay. Manifestations are okay in a Jesus meeting. The, the deacons will take care of that. We command that demonic thing to stop. In the name of Jesus. Mubebe, Mbereke Uko. That's a satanic agent. Anaita communication. We know that. Anaitisha, Nguvu, and then whatever. Vunja, vunja, yovindole. Wajina la Yesu. Shando, Rashaya. That's good, by the way. Don't, don't be scared. That's good. Shaitani anataka tu siendele, lakini tutaendelea. Zayada, yada, yabada. Somebody pray the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I like drama. That's an evidence. The enemy is trying to stop this message. He can't stop it. We know them. I usually tell you, but the anointing breaks every yoke. Somebody shout for Jesus. When I interrupt, the word is more important. Jesus tells us, shut up and come out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I said, number one, we need power and authority. Yeah, we need power and authority. Dunamis and exousia. These are the two Greek words. Now, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, the Bible says, and Jesus, when he had called his disciples to him, he gave them power over and clean spirits to cast them out. That's what they are doing right now. By the way, in a church like this, it's not just the pastor who should cast out devils. Even your neighbor should be a devil caster. Ask your, 
ask your neighbor kayado wewe ni kufukuzwa na shaitani ama unaweza kufukuza shetani seriously wewe ni mtu akuwa cast out ama wewe ni ku cast out devils wengine wana castiwa out hata from church by demons sitarudi huko tena hawanipendi the devil is a liar unapendwa hata na maraika Now, so he gave them power. I mean, he called them, he gave them power of unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. So he gave them what? Now, verse 7 down downwards, I almost said downstairs. Verse 7, downstairs. Yo ya kiingereza ilikuja na meli. Read out and loud. And as you go preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand verse 8 read out loud heal the sea cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freedom you have received freedom give oh my god we are power and authority we are power and authority to do those things hallelujah I'll give you another verse. Luke chapter 4 verse 36. Mimi napenda wakati kuna shida kama hizo, nikuonyesha hiki tutaongelelea ni kitu muhimu. Shaitani anajaribu kuizuilia. Kwa hivyo this is a main message. We have to advance in our territories. Hata shamba tutanunua, I'm telling you. I had a dream Uh, two days ago and we are doing a fundraising and i saw the millions we raised that day it was that three million over find above what we needed i think it was a dream to encourage me usiogope hata kama ni mtumishi wangu unajua mozo human eh na msema sasa nkaifafa what have we what have we just attempted so the lord ananizungumzia na niambia usijali itakuwa more than enough si tulisoma hivyo tulisoma hivyo last week in days of moses walitoa mpaka mafundi wakasema ambia Musa ambia watu msilete tena yeah and they were all amazed and spoke among themselves what did they say what a word this is for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits and they come out me i would want this church everybody to be a devil caster and they come out because of what power and authority what is the difference power is just uko na kilo nyingi uko na kilowatts nyingi authority hata kama ni kama police kadogo anaweza kusimamisha truck ya 24 because you have authority you are in position you can tell truck na ka crown glory to god Look at Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Power and authority. That's how to advance. Usikilia ati shaitani, shaitani amejitolea sana kukuzuilia. Lakini hata wewe jitolee na zile nguvu na mamlaka ambazo Bwana amekupa. Behold, read. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The power and authority to do this work is the same power and authority that gives us immunity. Nothing shall hurt us. The same power and authority that God has given us to advance and to move is the same power God gives us to protect us. 
power and authority. Write these things down. We have been given authority to act as a representative of Jesus and to do the following things. There are many. One, to preach the gospel. Power and authority ni kufanya nini? Number one, to preach the gospel. Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. You shall read at your own time. Number two, in the same verse, to make disciples. We have power and authority. Number two, to make disciples. Number three, we have power and authority to bless, to speak words empowered. Speak empowered words to bless. Like Matthew 10 verse 12 and 13, we can read this one. The Bible says, when you go into a household, greet it. Household there is family. Ukingia kwa familia, unawasalimia. The next verse. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. And if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. Kama wamekupokea vizuri. Your peace be upon them. In other words, you bless them. Number four, we have the mandate to break bondages. We have authority to break what? Isaiah 10, 27, the anointing breaks the yoke. Isaiah 10, 27, the anointing breaks the yoke. We have authority to break these bondages. Number whatever, number what? Five, to break curses. We have authority to break curses or what we call to bind and to lose. Uh, Matthew 16, 19, we have been given keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever we shall bound is bound in heaven. Uh, on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. We have been given the power and authority to break curses or even to bind and lose. And the next one is that we have been given authority to cast out demons. Yes, like that is going on right now. We're casting out those demons. Uyo aliingia kwa, kwa group. Uyo aliingia huko. We have been given authority, something else, to heal the sick. To heal the sick. And we have been given authority to raise the dead. That's what we read, to raise the dead. We have been given authority, the last one, to forgive sins. This one I will read. I, I've read it before. John 20, 23. Read it in NIV. John 20, 23. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So we have been given power to forgive sins. When you open your mouth and say, Nimekusame, inakuwaga hivya tabinguni. I, I pray today you forgive somebody. It's very powerful. When you forgive somebody, you release them. You release them. You set them free. You release them from prison. And they actually also release yourself. There's a time many years ago, here I preached a message on forgiveness, the key to freedom, how forgiveness leads us to freedom, right? And it's a general statement made by many people, and they are true. It's not in Proverbs or Ecclesiastes that unforgiveness is like taking poison and expecting your neighbor to die. It is the one who takes poison who is in trouble, so it's good to forgive. And things like this, if you don't forgive and you delay unforgiveness, a spirit of unforgiveness comes and lodges, takes position in your soul. You have an unforgiving spirit because you delayed in forgiving. So, I think those are powerful things. We have power to do what? To forgive. Now, Sina time ya ku we get into the other two on prayer and intercession and provisions for the journey, but I can just read scriptures and then we'll, we'll allow you to go meditate on it. Isaiah 38, let's talk about prayer and intercession just in two minutes. Isaiah 38 from verse 1 to 8, there's a story. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. 
And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Mamos, went to him and said, Thus says the Lord. He's telling Ezekiah. What did he tell Ezekiah? Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. I tell you the truth, that's not easy. Hakuna mutu, ata mugonjwa, anataka kufa. Nobody want to die. Kwanza it is worse. A prophet amekuja kwa hospitali. Amesema sasa fanya hivi, utoki hapa. Just prepare yourself. Set your house in order. Hi. No, I feel Ezekiah. Ezekiah, I feel him. Let's see what happened. Then Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. This guy had a relationship with God. Let's look at the content of his prayer. Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Ezekiah wept bitterly. Goja, you see how to negotiate with God. Negotiate for your project. Negotiate for your life. Negotiate for your marriage. Negotiate for your children. If you look at the content, he's saying, I have walked before you in truth. How have you been walking? Have you been a liar, con man? Have you been strange and so forth? I've been walking in truth. So, number two, I'm with a loyal heart. I'm humble, loyal. I follow. I have no problem with followership. I'm loyal, committed. And I've done what is good in your sight. In other words, I have followed your precepts, your commands, your judgments. I've followed your word. I've always done what you have always wanted to do. Let me tell you something. People who are living and walking like this, when they pray and cry out to God, God cannot be silent. What happened? And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Now Isaiah, yes, yeah, shall prophesy. Now me talk about your word. In fact, he's almost near the gate. Then the word does come. Now you are only Ezekiah, see your murefu, see your five days. Just a few sentences. Let me tell you, your short prayer is very powerful. Oh yes, oh yes. Notice, he did not begin by repenting. Lord, I repent before you so that I can pray. Kwani, how do you live? Verse 5. Go and tell Hezekiah. That says the Lord. The God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I, I like God. He hears prayer. He hears prayer. Oh my God. Thank him. He hears prayer. Father, I thank you. He said, I have seen your tears. God sees. I wish you can be praying crying. Instead of walking around. Okay. <laughs> that means this prayer was deep. Bakalilia. So, nyi vijana muna tembeaga tembeaga. Kuna season ya kutembea. Then the next season ya kufanya nini? Lakini kwa sababu hakuna kitu umeambiwa. Hakuna kitu unajua. Hakuna kitu spiritual. Hakuna prophecy. Maybe ndiyo macho yetu imekauka. God sees. He said, I will add to your days 15 years. In other words, this man, territory yake, alikuwa, in, alikuwa naisha, yeye ata hakuna mari ataenda, lakini God alimuongezea meaka, ili aendele in his assignment, spiritual assignment, 15 years. How many of you know 15 years siki to kidogo? Mutatu wakizaliwa 15 is in a teenager. Yeah, 15 years. You can buy land, you can build, you can have children, you can do a lot in 15 years. Huh? In fact, 15 years is so much that if we change constitution right now, we say the president stays 15 years, we will all go to the streets to riot. Because it is too much. So Ezekiel, Ezekiah was given 15 more years. Look at the next verse. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria 
and I'll defend this city. territory. Huyu jamaa ameponywa akapewa miaka 15 because of territory. Ishi milele kwa sababu ya territory yako. I declare nobody will die. I declare nobody will die. Every curse that every demoniac was bringing here, we remove it in the name of Jesus and you will live. Because of territory. And this is a sign to you from the Lord. What is a sign? That the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Eight. Sasa akampea dawa. No, no, no. Kabla dawa. Akamambia this is a sign. I will bring the shadow of the sandal which has gone down with the sun on the sandal of Ahas. Ten degrees backward. And the sun returned ten degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. Why is God changing the heavenlies and the sun changing and everything because he's so concerned about territories Ezekiah must not leave earth now but notice there was a sickness that came to stop him we must also stop that sickness how by prayer and intercession we're going to have a convocation this month 20 a prayer convocation let me give you the date 22nd to 24th Wednesday to Friday three days of prayer and we will push in the spirit because atutaki territory ile ambao bwana amenyotuonyesha in the spirit physical or spiritual you were interrupted by anything we are going to pray let me mention the last one other than prayer and intercession prepare your provisions i will read two scriptures that look like opposites matthew 10 verse 9 we were just reading free day you have received free day give the next verse says provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your body money belts uh-huh no bag for your journey no two tunics no sandals no stuff but a worker is worthy of his food in other words mali utaenda about your takura usibebe so jesus are you serious we should not in other words to end by faith no preparation no fundraising no money bag no nothing just go now let's see in luke 22 verse 35 and he said to them when i sent you without money bag knapsack and sandals did you lack anything What did they say? Nothing. So, how is the future looking like for you? You will lack nothing. Clap your hands somebody. The future looks like you will lack nothing and now he says in the next verse but now he who has money bag hey, let him take it and likewise a knapsack and he who has no sword let him sell his garment and buy one next verse what i say to you this is re- and must still be accomplished in me this is what was written that he was numbered with the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end is a quotation the disciples say lord here are two swords our disciples chose now walikuwa walikuwa pia eh walikuwa proto they were serious proto here are two swords jesus akasema aje this enough There are two types of provisions we need 
on our journey into our territories. One, provisions of money. And number two, sword of the word of God. The sword of the word of God. Many of us have money, but you have no word. And others have the word and have no money. But now, God is going to bring provision. We need both. We need both. And we will take our territories. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just pray in the Spirit right now.